Costa Mesa, California at the Sunset 17 Studio, it's time for Sunset Rewind with Kevin and Mo. All right, Sunset Rewind, week number six in the books officially, Coach. Got a lot of great action going on this week, so let's jump right to it. A lot of teams are in action. Let's start with Newport Harbor on a little bit of a heater right now going into league play. Um, big game at home against the Soro. They fell down early, 17-0. So we're going to pick up action in the second half. Jake Muir in at the quarterback position is going to do a good job getting outside the pocket. It's going to find Jonah Takamori in the flat to keep the drive alive. That was third down. So this is the drive they had to have. Then from there... Jake Muir again is going to feel the pressure up the middle. He's going to recognize it, get out of that pocket, buy himself some time, and he's going to find Cade Fiegel, who had a monster night, dragging across. Be careful throwing against your body like that, but it worked out this time. Gets in the end zone, so a game that looked like could be getting away from them is now 17-7, so Harbor's getting back in it slowly but surely. Their defense would get them the ball back. Again, third down, Sammy Stremick. Remember him? He was in here. Absolutely. On the quick slant, keeps the drive alive. Again, another third down. Sammy Strimmick again, the money down. It's going to run down the middle. Muir's going to recognize that gap in the defense, hits him. Strimmick in 60.7 yards a game for the Sailors. Uh, he's a big weapon. Couldn't yeah. quite get in, but that's okay because on the next play, Glenn Baranowski is going to follow his blocks. The offensive line gets a nice push. And so now, just like that, a game that's getting away is 17-14. So Harbor's back in this, still trailing until the player of the game, Cade Fiegel, is going to drop back. He's going to jump the route, picks it off down the far sideline. He goes, will he get in? No, but they are in the red zone, so <laughs> things are looking good for Newport Harbor. And there, Riker, is that Buddy? How Correct, you, yes. All right, Riker. Rikers Island Buddy is going to follow the offensive line. Look at this cutback lane. He recognizes it. Gets up in there. So just like that, a game that was going to be a blowout for Tesoro is now a game they're trailing. 21-17 Harbor would take the lead. Plant the left foot and go. Now Tesoro wasn't going to go away. Fourth down, they're going to stay aggressive. Quarterback avoids a sack. Does a great job getting outside the pocket. It's going to find a receiver over the leaping defender. Gets a nice block from his receiver. It's going to take it to the end zone. And just like that, Tesoro will retake the lead. But it wouldn't last long. And here's why. Cade Fiegel is going to rip the heart out of that Tesoro team after they just battled back to take the lead again. Special teams. Breaks one tackle, gets to the outside, and just uses that soccer speed. 90 yards to the house. You know, Cade plays offense. 91. Thank That's you, Taryn, for correcting Bill. <laughs> All right, so just like that, it's 28-24, fourth quarter. So now Harbor is feeling good. But Tesoro, refusing to go away, is going to drive down the field. The quarterback's going to get outside the pocket, find his receiver at the back of the end zone. So now it's 31-28 Tesoro. So back and forth this game wow. went in the second half. Yeah, it was just a, it was a barn burner, but Harbor would not be denied. Sammy Strimmick is going to drag. Nothing there. Muir gets out of the pocket. Now it's just improvision. Muir looking downfield, and look where he places this ball. Pretty much threads a needle. you got two defenders on the sideline. Find Strimmick with about a half inch to spare. So the drive will stay alive, and then from there, Cade Fiegel. This is going to repost down the middle. Muir steps in the throw, hits him. Can't quite finish it, but sets his team up deep in Harbor Territory and from there. If you're the contain man, you've got one job, and what do you think that is, Dole? Contain. Exactly. And I don't <laughs> think this guy does this because Jack recognizes it, pulls it. Ah, you're bad. I think they were running and jumbo on that. Well, they were, but he pulled in that in man's got to stay outside. So 34-31, but Tesoro continued the battle. They drive all the way down the field from the right hash to tie the game. Now, if you're a Florida State fan, you might want to turn this part off because just like <laughs> FSU Miami, it is Ooh. wide right. Newport Harbor would go on to win the game. Oh. Look at the sidelines. That's the best part of football. 34-31, the Sailors get their second straight win. They're 1-0 in league. Things are looking good in Sailor Nation. All right. Uh, we are going to move on, Cole, to the interview. Would you please get this off my screen immediately? <laughs> Thank you. Like right. now? I'm being difficult. <laughs> All right. Uh, so McKenna Maloof, who I think 
would be a good person to replace Taryn. Oh, you bet. oh, I'm going to replace you in a couple seconds if you don't watch what you say. Well, let's let's decide in the comments who you prefer, McKenna or uh, Taryn. And All right, pull the volume. If you up. prefer me or Sleepy Mo? Fair enough. Hey, I was a bit. Hi, I'm McKenna Maloof with the Sunset Rewind. I'm here with Kate Fiegel. How did that third quarter interception feel and turn the energy for the team? Uh, felt great. You know, we went at halftime and we we're down 17-0 and said we need our defense to get stops. We need our offense to score, and it's exactly what we did. And that end of fourth quarter, that missed kick, how did that feel for you guys? It felt you awesome. Do, this, was, <laughs> this was our first game of the league, and, you know, we had to start out with a W. We need to win three games to go to playoffs, and you know, that missed field goal gave us so much hope, and we're going to have the, rest two we or the next two games we're going to have to win. And how does this feel going into the battle today? It feels awesome. We're going to watch film tomorrow. Too fix our mistakes and then watch film on Sunday about CDM, see the tendencies and go out and win the game. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Kane. All right. Thank you, McKenna. Great interview there. So the first ever Bravo League game for the Newport Harbor Sailors ends in victory, coming back from a 17-0 deficit to win 34-31. And, you know, snatch defeat or snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. You know, Fiegel averaging 72.8 yards a game, doing a great job. High-powered Sailor offense. I call that kind of a turning point game. You know, the Sailors started off 0-4, then they got the win last week. And to come back and rally, you know, like they did against Tesoro, that could be one of those games that really, really turns your season around. We're going to get into predictions on the fan zone. Yeah. But after about week two or three, there was no doubt in my mind who I was picking in that game. Right. But, boy, the way Harbor's played, it, it's all coming together. The team we thought they could beat at the start of the year, yeah. they're becoming. Yeah. And those receivers are stepping up, the defense. I mean, everybody's kind of doing their job. So, uh, shout out. To, isn't it amazing what a difference a couple weeks can make? Wow, that's a, that's a whole new football team. I, I know. I'm happy for the kids, the yeah. coaches. We know how hard they work. And when you go 0-4, it's like all this hard work and you have nothing to show for it. Well, now the hard work is showing. I think they're probably walking around right now thinking that they're 2-0. and They're just disregarding those first four games and moving forward. Taryn, what was the vibe at the stadium? You were there. You called it. It was a pretty good vibe from pretty much both sides. I think that it was a great atmosphere. The Sailor Faithful were still – they still had a chance. I honestly thought that they definitely had a chance because – the store was up 17 nothing, obviously, at halftime, but then Newport Harbor just needed to just clean it up everything and start finishing drives, and they did. Because they had a trip in the red zone, which unfortunately resulted in a punt, and then a fourth, another trip to the red zone in the first half, which resulted in a pick six, which Jake Muir was trying to arm punt. So I think Newport Harbor in that first half, they were there. It's just that they just had to finish drives a little bit more clean. And this is the second year that they've come back against Tesoro. All right, well, they got it done. Props to that uh, football team, the players, the coaches, the fans. Good time. So that sets up an epic match against CDM next week. We'll talk more about that in the fan zone. But, uh, boy, I can't wait. All right, where are we headed next, Coach? We are going to go a little south down to Laguna Hills where Huntington Beach was in action. This one wasn't nearly as dramatic because uh, Oilers, man, they just came out. and uh, Impressive. Laid, yeah, they laid a beat down. So let's just get into this right away. Cole, please pull it up. First drive of the game, Edmonds is going to find Foster. How many times have we heard this combination? Well, you know he's averaging 125.2 yards a game. Oh, that's one of the reasons why. <laughs> right down the far sideline. Then again, the two inside receivers are going to clear out. Fosh on the quick slant. Catches it. Gets up in the end zone. So right out of the gates, Huntington Beach is going to take an early 7-0 lead. Then it'll be the defense's turn. Trent Clark, the defensive end, coming off the edge. Inside move. Pretty much just ragged off that quarterback. Brings him down to the ground. And will get the ball back to the offense. And from there... The Man of Steel. Steel Kurtz is going to run a little combo route with the number one receiver. Blows right by the defender. Kind of high points it. Can't quite finish it. But Edmonds would. He's going to call his own number. Going to follow the fullbacks. Going to just get up in there. Five rushing touchdowns this year so far for Brady. He's a runner. We, we talk about his arm, but trust me, Edmonds can run. So it's 14-0. First quarter, Huntington Beach is looking good. More offense from the Huntington Beach Oilers. This time, Mikola, Mika Riola. Huntington can run the ball, too. We talk about their uh, passing game, but look at this. Taryn's approval. Up the gut. <laughs> Can't quite shake the four defenders, but gets his team in a Actually, good position. Actually, it's Riola. I'm sorry. Mika Riola. Speaking of him again. Riola. This time, he's going to <laughs> catch the ball in the flat. Jukes one defender. Jukes another. Carries another one into the end zone, so... At the start of the qu second quarter, Huntington Beach is going to take a 21-0 lead. They are in control, and it just continues. From there, 
Troy Foster is going to run a sluggo, which is a little slant, and then go. That defender falls down, just pretty much jukes him out of his shoes. So Huntington was in control all night long. 28 nothing. And then the defense in the closing moments of the first half. Trent Clark had a monster game. It's coming off the edge. It's going to overrun up. It retraces his steps, gets back up into the pocket, and just ragdolls that quarterback again, brings him down aggressively, setting up the offense. Brady Edmonds. Acting like Marshawn Lynch here. He's going to go beast mode. Kind of mishandles the snap, so he improvises. Just carrying people in there. This is a quarterback, by the way. This is not a running back, but he certainly acts like one. 35-0. Logan Gray. Now, I wonder if this is the little brother of Hunter Gray. Terrence? Somebody put in the fan comments if they know. Anyway, he's going to blitz up the A-gap. And uh, the quarterback doesn't have a chance. All night long, they were in this guy's face. Couldn't set up. 35 0 at halftime. Huntington Beach is in total control. Now, in the second half, Lagoon Hills, fourth down, stand aggressive, trying to get something. But the cornerback for Huntington Beach is going to break it up, trying to preserve that shutout. They would get a field goal, but that was kind of inconsequential late in the game. But Mika Riola, following that offensive line, all night long, Huntington was large and in charge. They had gone to win this one 42 to 3. Great job by Huntington Beach. They get a win, a much-needed win in league play. They're 1-0. That's going to set up a big one next week against La Habra. That's a game I think we're all going to be at because yeah. Battle of the Base Thursday. We'll talk more about that in the fan zone. But great job, um, Taryn. I mean, Cole, let's move on. I'm going to go ahead. we got an interview from our guys at JP Media. Hello, Dean Ferguson here with the JP West Player of the Game, sponsored by Sunset Rewind. A great game today. How Opening up league, how has – things changed yeah I mean we're, we're facing all new opponents I don't think we've faced any of these teams ever if not in a long long time so you know starting off right starting off with a big win is huge for us going to a tough league or a tough opponent in La Habra so you know just getting things going getting the ball rolling is nice for us uh, four touchdowns throwing one one touchdown running take me through what you in your head like how can you succeed yeah I mean Really, the film room is, you know, what does it. But then, I mean, our offensive line performed amazing tonight. Zero sacks, obviously, you know, that'll get it done. Michael was running the ball great, you know, so we had a run threat to keep the defense honest. And then our receivers, you know, week in and week out, they've been performing. So, you know, all, all credit to those guys. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to celebrate uh, the first league win this year? Uh, so I actually got to go hop on a flight. I'm going to Ohio State tomorrow. So I'm, I'm going to the airport right now. Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Brady. Of course, Dean. On his way to Ohio State, that's kind of a cool little weekend for him. You win a football a game, and then you're on your way to Ohio State, who rolled yesterday. So Huntington Beach playing in their first ever Epsilon <laughs> League game, 42-3 to against Laguna Hills, who won CIF a couple of years ago. That's an impressive victory. And, I mean, what can you say about Brady Edmonds? 12-17 of throwing, had three throwing touchdowns, had two rushing touchdowns, so he counted for five total touchdowns in the game. And for the season, for the season – only, what, six games in so far, right? Right. You know how many touchdowns Edmonds has accounted for total? I'm going to say a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot's a great guess. 15 passing, five rushing, 20 total. Just getting it done. And like I said earlier, Troy Foster, I mean, what can you say about him at wide receiver? Uh, speed kills, right? I mean, yeah. boy. No, those guys, they've got it going on. I mean, there's a reason why Ohio State desperately yeah. wants Edmonds. Well, uh, he's a good player. He's only a, he's doing this as a sophomore. Go back to your sophomore year well, in high school. I mean, I, yeah. I got to imagine Troy Foster's starting to get some looks too. He's got nine touchdowns himself, and it seems like he's always getting open. He runs these great routes, uh, and you know he just goes to a spot. Edmonds puts puts the ball there, and he's there. The same with Steel Kurtz. Huntington Beach looking great. I mean, by the way, Huntington Beach has wow. a great website they got up. You got to check this out. Go to <laughs> hboilerfootball.com. JP Media runs it. Um, I mean, it's got stats. It, it, they really. I mean, you got to uh, check it out. It's just, awesome. I wish all the high schools. Football teams would come up with a website like that. I think JP runs. I'm not sure, but it's a great website. Check it out. And thank you to Dean Ferguson. Another great interview there. For well, the between him and McKenna, I don't know yeah. if we need Taryn anymore. I mean, I'm, you know. <laughs> I don't think we need your butt anymore, Mo. <laughs> oh, Taryn, come on. It's say, all. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to replace you faster than ever. Taryn, we need you, Taryn. Thank you, Dole. You're welcome. At least you acknowledge me. I do. You're Taryn, you're I love great. your hard work. I'm just telling you, McKenna and Dean are really stepping up. I mean, it's... Well, you straight up just told me that you don't need me anymore. Maybe we'll just... Iron sharpens iron. Ooh, yeah. A, a rising tide, Taryn, lifts all ships. We just got to raise our game. Yeah. All of us. 
Do you know Dina McKenna many... might be the new host. She might be right. <laughs> yeah, she's coming after your job, buddy. Well, I'm, I'm a, it's available. Get ready to put the fries in the bag. <laughs> All right, well, let's let, let's move on to some Where more we positive going now, stuff. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Right, Do you get... know how many rushing yards Laguna Hills had? I don't know if you count sacks and the rushing stats. I don't know if they still do that, but not a lot. Enlighten us. 35. Wow. That was because they didn't have Christopher and Trala, but honestly, I don't know if that would have mattered. Not, nothing against Lagoon Hills, but Huntington Beach just looks I mean, strong. Yeah, unless that guy's an All-American, it wouldn't have mattered. Because he had 750 r- rushing yards before he missed time. So Huntington Beach just looked like all-around perfect game. I don't know if you can play much better than they did on Friday night. <laughs> well, speaking of playing well, let's move on. Great this win, was a game team. I was at. Um, another record-breaking night by a running back. And back-to-back weeks, yeah. we have the run. You know, you think about the spread. You think about, you know, RPOs and how it's gone to more wide open. And back-to-back weeks, we'd have, we've had running backs break records, I mean, which what, is great to see. What can you say about Julius Gillick that we haven't already said? I mean, he's Well, I'll tell you right great. now. Uh, <laughs> would you please pull up my monitor, Cole? Edison was home against, by the way, I went to the wrong stadium. I thought they were at Huntington Beach, so I'd pull up. Thank <laughs> God I got I. there early. And then I've seen all these Fountain Valley people. I'm like, why are they at this game? Well, I was headed to Westminster thinking I was going to the Fountain Valley game, and you called me, and I said, oh, I just stayed on Golden West and headed to Huntington. Well, Helix, I got there on time. Thank God. Helix was in town. That's one of the ringers from San Diego, but you wouldn't know it the way um, Edison played. So early on, Julius Gillick. Let's see if he even gets touched. <laughs> No, they don't even touch. That's like when you warm up before the game, you're just doing like jogging in the end zone. That's how easy it is for him with that offensive line. So there's TD number one. Edison comes out, 7 nothing, And then Devin Blake, remember him? He was in the studios, going to arm over the guard, strips the ball. Jeremiah Ross falls on it. So Helix was trying to tie the game up early on, but the Edison defense creates a turnover. Now, when Julius Gillick's a running back, I get why they're pinching everybody in the box. <laughs> Save Savi Niamata is going to recognize this and simply pull it. I mean, you got the whole defense in there trying to kill on Gillick. RPO. Get him to do a little mini uh, stiff arm. And then look at Anon DiGiacomo. Great job stock blocking downfield. Edison's receivers do as good a job as anybody at stock blocking. They've always been that way. Remember I Ash guarantee, and Hurley? Yep. I guarantee they work on that at practice. Yeah. Okay. Julius Gillick out of the Wildcat formation is going to follow his back. Get up in there. They actually do touch him a little bit. Dude, there's a reason he's averaging 174.2 yards a game. I mean, pfft, come on. Touchdown number two. We're counting. So Aiden Dia, Aiden DiGiacomo. So I interviewed him after the game and butchered that. We had to like do it five takes because I couldn't say it right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, Turn. Excellent. Off the play action. Now the safety here is in good position to come over the top and make a play, but he just takes a poor angle. Niamata puts the ball right where he needs to be. Nice catch. This kid's only a sophomore, so him... Right in the bread He's going to be around for a while. And then Julius, again, up the gut. He's going to get the touchdown, and that is touchdown number three. We're keeping track. 21 nothing Edison. Things are looking good. Then Devin Blake, again, this time, is going to arm under. Look at that rip. Just brings the quarterback down. All night long, that Edison defense was all over the quarterback. And then Julius Gillick. Do they touch him? I didn't see a touch yet. Nope, they don't touch him. High stepping. Off to the races. So this is touchdown number four. It's 28 nothing. Edison in charge. More defense. This time in the secondary, this quarterback, I think he thinks he's playing three flies up because Will Harrison, the corner, is going to pick it off and go down the near sideline. Wouldn't return it, but would get the ball back to the charge at midfield, and that would set up Julius Gillick. Touchdown number five. And with this touchdown, he tied about five other Edison players. So 35-7 at this point. Now he just needs one more to break the record. So second half, Helix comes out. They want to try to get something going. Fourth and three. This is why you lift weights and you hit the sled. Edison's D-line is stronger than Helix's offensive line. It's really that simple. And they've got better leverage. Get the ball back. And Julius, this is the play that would set the all-time record for touchdowns in a game for Edison. Up the middle. And this was early in the third quarter. I mean, he could have completely obliterated that record. But he got six, which I'm sure is good enough. Got to get some other guys playing time. And then Helix just trying to make play. Watch. Okay, so again, Aiden. Giacomo. There you go, Taryn. It's testing you. Watch him steal this ball from the receiver. I mean, again, a sophomore bullying that senior receiver. He reversed mossed him. He did. That's right. (laughs) Another pick. Return to about midfield. So nice job, Jamakabo. So 42-14, Edison wins. Uh, We do have an interview. Uh, Now, this is a team that's on a hot streak. Five straight. 
Looking good at Charger Nation. So cool. We're going to move on to the interview. You ready to rock? Sunset Rewind here with JP Persaw. And the son from Seattle, Julius Gillick. Uh, Julius, you just set the school record for, for touchdowns in the game. I don't know if you know that. Who do you attribute that to? Uh, I got him. And, you know, the other dudes in that picture right there. I love my line. And uh, this probably... This is probably the, the the least beat up I've ever been because them holes were so big, you know, and I just – nothing but love. And, you know, this guy too right there, pan it over, Maddox Thomas. Get out of here, Maddox. Come on, bro. Hey, well, it's a team thing, right? No, nobody better nobody better to come in, bro. Come on, give me some notes, bro. This, this guy's a dog right here. When I'm gone, it's him. He's the face of this this team, and I just want to give him so some So you guys some are on a five-game right win streak. What's been the key? Um, <sighs> taking Honestly, I think we know – we knew how much of a good team we were at the start of the season. And we came in with kind of a bad mindset, but we changed that. And over over the time is coming, we came together as a group, and now we're facing be better teams and good teams each week and making it better. Well, let me ask you this. This is probably the dumbest question or easiest you're going to get. Who do you think stepped up tonight and played a key role in the win? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, anyone uh will, will harrison and save <laughs> niamata those are the two i thought everybody too. everybody i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna lie it's everybody you know it's, right. it's always the team you guys actually get a break heading into league play what's kind of thinking of the team as you head into the alpha league one of the most competitive if not the most in the country i am not scared i'm gonna tell you right now I, god got us and i don't know what the result gonna be but on the bus here i wish we were playing missing well, you'll, said, you'll, you'll get ready. your chance i don't i don't know win lose or draw i'm ready they good, but we good. I'm just going to say that. All right, most important question. Where are you guys going after the game to eat? Stone fire. We about to eat good. You know what I'm saying? Good I'm going to like six different places. And I'm eating good tonight. Man. And what are you ordering? Uh, some pasta, some pizza, yeah. some breadsticks. Yeah, a little, a little hey, a little, a little Coke on the side. Mm -hmm. Tri-tip. Yeah, we're, yeah, that's we're set. You know, All right, guys. Well, listen, you've earned it. Congratulations on a great win, and best of luck going forward. Thank you. Yeah, much appreciate it. Wow, Edison, man. That is a team that is firing on all cylinders right now. Confident. And having fun, which is a, a great combination. Five in a row they've run off now. Like I said, Gillick is the man. Uh, believe he's up to 17 touchdowns for the season now. Helix, when they came up that five freeway from San Diego, I don't think they knew what they were getting into because Edison, I mean, I knew I knew Edison was going to win that game, but to dominate it like they did, that was impressive football. Well, that was payback from last year. Remember, Edison went down yeah. there and we're, and we're in control early and kind of let Helix off um, – with that game last year, but I know this was a whole different Edison team and a whole different Helix team, but they came out, took care of business. You know, they've got a buy yeah. now, oh. setting up that big Los Sal match. The up. collision course is about to happen, folks. You know, and something two weeks from now. So I was talking to Sam Thompson after the game and he said something inter interesting. He reminded me that um, when we went to their summer passing league tournament, right. he said, keep an eye on Aiden DiGiacomo. He said, he's a dog. And I'm telling you guys, I don't remember him telling us that, but he reminded me that he did. He did say that to us, and Gave sure enough, the sophomore. You. Remember, Sam's only a sophomore. Right. Aiden's only a sophomore. So, and then they got the running back. They're in good hands, not just this year, but going forward. And for Julius Gillick to break the single game TD rushing record, think about how storied of a program Edison is. Like all those names, he, I mean, he jumped. NFL up. guys. Yeah. Right. I mean, think about that. I mean, going back to when when we were kids, Kerwin Bell. I mean, way back when. I mean, Fletcher. I, I mean, mean, we can go yeah. on and on. I mean, for him to eclipse all of those guys in that record book, that's at a school you know, like Edison. That's tremendous. So now to break it, you would need seven touchdowns. What coach <laughs> is going to let a player score seven touchdowns? I mean, that's how. And like you alluded to in your breakdown, it seems like he got that six touchdown in the third quarter. So, I mean, hypothetically, he probably could have run for 10, right? Right. I mean, they I mean, pulled him. I mean, they, yeah, they did the right thing and pulled him. You know? I said, I told him, I said, you know, Julius, you're your own worst enemy because you have so much success. <laughs> like, you're, you're getting yourself yanked. But, hey, man, that's a nice problem to have. Boy, Montana, they got to just be watching his film and be like, wow. we got." No, I think they're sweating bullets here. because now other teams are going to start right, calling. Yeah, so they're just thinking, hey, hang that's on, true hang too. on, hang on. All right, all right up so next? Uh, let's move on. More good news. Let's just get all the wins uh, done. This time, we don't have a helmet for Marina yet. Dole, maybe we'll stop there on the way back and pick <laughs> one up. Uh, Marina was on the road with their undefeated record, looking to go to 6-0 and in league play. Um, Gabe Carlos, who actually used to be at Edison, in the backfield. I want you to watch the left tackle and the wing back. They're going to absolutely wipe out this defensive end. No line, no shine. He's back five yards, ten yards. That's a defensive lineman who just got wiped out. 
So nice job by the left side of that offensive line. They are shining. Gabe Carlos is going to take it. Follows blockers. So first drive of the game, Marina's going to come out, set the tone, 7 nothing. And this time the defense, Troy Atkins and Gabriel Jesse off the edge, shut down the run game. And this is a defense that just lights out. Uh, Sunny Hills really couldn't move the ball at all. So at the end of one quarter at 7 nothing, the one touchdown of the game that Sunny Hills would get would be out of a jumbo formation. They're just going to get up in there. And whenever you play goal line defense, if that back gets by, he's gone because you don't have safety help. So Sunny Hills would try to tie it up here. They get the six points. Interestingly enough, they're going to try to go for two against the stellar defense. I respect the fact they're staying aggressive, but it didn't work. Marina's going to shut it down. So despite what this coach thinks, they did not score. And so they would have a 7-6 lead, and they'd never give that lead up. Duke Caldwell off the edge, and Brian, uh, excuse me, Brayden O'Rourke up the middle just harassing the quarterback. I mean, that's, it's tough with defenders in your face like that. So it would go into half 7-6. So Sunny Hills is hanging around. I know they got a couple of ringers eligible this week, so it wasn't the 0-5 Sunny Hills that we've been seeing. Okay, third quarter. Gabe Carlos again. Marina's going to come out, pound the ball all the way down the field, follows blocks up into the end zone. So now Marina's starting to get a little separation. It's 14-6. More running. The line is shining. Gabe again is going to fall. Look at that. Hole gets up in there, and they're just pounding the rock all the way down the field. And now this time, Garrett Honeycutt's going to call his own number. The whole defense is going to follow Gabe, rightfully so. So he sees that, and he's getting those tough inside yards, showing that he can run the ball too, being aggressive. And then they'd finish the drive off with Gabe again, getting to the outside, seeing the gap, hitting it. And so at this point, it's 21-6 Marina. Just eating up yards with the run game there. It's exactly what they did. Yeah. And so now it's up to the defense to finish off. Duke Caldwell is going to arm under, stuff the back in the backfield. I mean, all that long, they couldn't run, they couldn't pass. And here's another reason why. Troy Atkins off the edge is just basically going to one-arm sack this quarterback. And it had to be a frustrating night for the offensive coordinator for Sunny Hills because no matter what they tried to do, it just wasn't working. Brandon Atkinson. On the inside, beats the guard, and him and about four other defenders just bring down. Six games, starting D has only given up four touchdowns. Well, the defense is one, big, one of the big reasons why. So Marina wins 21-6. to six. That front seven's looking like the monsters of the midway. And um, they're 6-0. 1-0 in the league. Nothing wrong Marina. with that. Marina, so, uh, so yeah. congratulations to Marina. You know what league they're playing? Viking Nation. The Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Lambda. Yeah, so they're 1-0, their first ever Lambda league game. Taking out Sunny Hills. so uh, And if they win league, I'm going to reach out to Coach T. they got to get that Lambda, Lambda, Lambda patch and put that as the league <laughs> champs, cool. like the one from Revenge of the Nerds. So you got the run game working with Carlos and Honeycutt. And then, obviously, you got Cassidy, who's averaging 73.6 yards a game. That's, that's a high-powered offense. I mean, we always talk about their defense, but the offense is getting it done, too. That's just a well-rounded team. They're not 6-0 and by mistake. I mean, Marina, look at them. And talk about... Uh, Coach T and Eric Johnson, the defense. Wow, just getting it well, done. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. You don't have to score 45 points a game to have a great record. Right. Their offense is fine. They're methodical. They make the plays when yeah. they need to, but the defense keeps them in everything. Good, solid 21-6 win, you know? Just remember, the tortoise always beats the hare by being slow and steady. Yeah, they almost play like you always talk about, like how Edison reminds you of Penn State. Mm -hmm. Marina kind of reminds you of like a, an old school Big Ten team. You know, like their offense just does their job. They hold teams low on uh, de the defensive end. They're winning games like, you know, like, like I said. I'll tell you who they remind me of, Taryn, is the Minnesota Golfers. Oh, did Minnesota play yesterday? Uh, we'll talk about that in the fan zone. Okay. I don't want to get him started. He's already in a salty mood. I know they won, what, 24-17? Something like that. Turn that off now. <laughs> Put those fingers down. <laughs> nah. <laughs> all right, Coach. How do UCLA do, boy? Hey, we covered. How about San and Diego? That, that's all we can cheer for nowadays. Do we cover the line? Nobody wants to talk about San Diego State. Oh, yeah. They, they want to. Yes. I predicted they'd win by three. How about the Dodgers? Yes. Yes. Good times. All right, all right where are we going next, up. Coach? We're getting into fans on stuff. All right. Uh, now let's get into some of the bad news. Um, a good game, nonetheless. This was a game you were at. No, no. Uh, we're going to do Fountain Valley. I, I, I screwed you up. Oh. We got a special guest. He's behind me right now. He's going to join us for the CDM game. Uh, the all-time single game rushing leader from CDM, Wyatt Lucas. How are you doing, Wyatt? Mr. Lucas. All right. He's going to be up here after this game. Um, so let's get this one done. 
All right. Fountain Valley, the game I showed up to on accident, was at Huntington Beach against Orange. Early on, Lucas Alexander is going to hit Luke Taylor on the out route. First drive of the game. They're doing a good job moving the ball down the field. Westminster. What about Westminster? That's where they were. No, they were at Huntington. Dull. They were at Capshoe Field. Right. Oh, my Yeah, bad. you were there. Yeah. Dull. Yeah. Dull. Oh. How could you? Boy, Cole, should we start this whole show over? Yeah. Dull just ruined it. All right, Cameron Farr is going to follow his fullback. He's going to kick out the corner. I was originally going to Westminster. And so early on, it was 7 nothing Fountain Valley looking good. But Orange would answer. Quarterback's going to drop back against the blitz. Just a curl wrap, but the defender can't quite wrap him up. And with no safety help over the top, Orange would tie it up. 7-7 seven, seven in the second quarter. And then my man, remember him, A.C. Tring? He was in the studio. Orange is looking to take the lead, but A.C. is not going to let it happen. Blocks it. Almost could have a scoop and score, but they got the block nonetheless, so it prevented Orange from taking the lead. Met A.C.'s dad on the sideline the other night. Great guy. Yep, yep. And so Raymond Dillon Jr., the wideout, off play action, is going to run a post. Lucas does a nice job hitting him. So about 10 yards after the catch. So Fountain Valley's on the move, looking to retake the lead. This time it's Brady Tomko. I hope he goes to Notre Dame, by the way. His dad's a Golden Domer. His dad is a Notre Dame guy, yeah. Shakes one defender, uses that speed, gets down the sideline, can't quite get in the end zone, but sets his team up in the goal line. And then from there, Cameron Farr is going to follow the offensive line. So Fountain Valley would take the lead. So now they've taken control of the game again. So it's 14-7, and that would be the halftime score. So in the second half, Orange is going to come out, try to tie this game up. They would. Quarterback's going to find the receiver down the far sideline, throws a great ball, puts it right on the money. So now we got a game tied up 14 all. Orange would stay aggressive. Now we're in the fourth quarter. Orange driving. Again, just throws a deep ball. Wide receiver high points it. So just like that, a game where Fountain Valley was in charge and in control, they're down seven points. So it's late in the game. There's about three minutes left. It's third down. The defense has got to get a stop so the offense can try to score. Sam Garz is going to shoot the gap on third down. Stuffs the running back. So that's a nice job by the Fountain Valley defense, keeping their team in it. It's going to set the offense up. So Lucas Alexander is going to drive his team down the field. Brady Tomko at the wide-up position. It's going to sit in that zone. Gets him inside the 40. Clock running. And then again, Lucas Alexander is going to find Sam Garza. He's going to swing the back into the flat. Going to get his team down to about the 15-yard line. But that's when it started to fall apart. A couple penalties, a couple mishaps. <sighs> it's going to end up with fourth and about 26. This is a tough down to convert. Yeah. Last chance for Fountain Valley. Clock's running. Going fourth down and to forever. the wire. Lucas steps up in the pocket, gets the time, but they just can't quite hang on. Orange would go on to win it. 21-14, uh, heartbreaking loss for Fountain Valley. That's yeah. a game we thought they would win. That was a tough one. I didn't uh, really need to interview anybody afterwards. That was, that was a heartbreaking loss. Back and forth, you know, 7-0, 7-7, 14-7, and then Orange goes ahead. Fountain Valley showed a lot of, you know, character. They played to the very end, but just couldn't quite get it done in and, and their first Foxtrot League game. And Orange is uh, a better team than their record indicates. That's a, that's a good team. So tough one for Fountain Valley, but I know they'll bounce back next week and get it. You know, I don't know. The road doesn't know. get any easier. Laguna get any Beach. Easier, we'll talk about that during the that's prediction. That's going to be a tough game. I mean, yeah. That's a tough Laguna fall. Laguna Beach game. is wiping out. They're not just winning games. They're no, wiping they're, people they're out. You they say got they're a wiping out everybody, but they only won 7-6 against Northwood. That Northwood team was 5-0 and going into that game. Yeah. But yeah. if you look but at you Laguna Beach. they're wiping out everybody. Well, Taren, let's <laughs> look at their stats. You're making it sound like they're crushing everybody. I'll yeah. bet you when we do the fan zone show, they've like outscored their opponents like 100 and something to 22. I'm telling you, they're wiping out everybody. Pull up max preps. We can get it right You're now. saying everybody, but Northwood. Okay, 7-6. They won. They beat a team that was undefeated. Okay, they wiped out everybody but Northwood. Is there that make you, you happy? Go. Fountain Valley Taren, just have some fact checking me on air. <laughs> they do You're the English lessons. major, buddy. Siri, oh, should no, I fire me, Taryn? <laughs> Hiding behind C Siri. Typical yes. sleepy mode. So Laguna Beach right now. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, they're... We're getting into fans on stuff. Let's go. White, get That's up here, White. Games. We got... Wyatt Lucas The rushing champion Mar. record holder, Thanks Wyatt Lucas. Thanks for joining us. Whirlwind Wyatt. 
You like that nickname? That's, that's a good one, Terrence. So, Wyatt, I tried yeah. to get you in last week, which would have been perfect because you just set the record. Um, but that's all right. Uh, you guys had a tough opponent this week. You're on the road against a San Juan Hills team that's only lost one team against a ringer from Arizona. Wasn't that like Uncle Wiggly or something? Who'd they play? Uh, <laughs> Igly. Igly, yeah. So that's, Again, you don't do your research. <laughs> I missed it by one letter. He's, this, he's tough. Anyway, yeah, Terrence in a bad mood. Terrence. Wow. Uh, English major. So let's get into this. Um, <clears throat> you guys fell down early on. And by the way, Wyatt's going to stay for the fan zone. We just kind of say, hey, jump on in. And this is kind of an impromptu thing. So contribute as much as you want. Relax. It's all good. Well, it's this great is- to have a player in the game actually break down the film <clears throat> with you. 100%. All right. So let's start this game. CD again, was on the road at San Juan Hills. They were down 17 nothing. So let's take over the, this in the second half. I don't want to watch the first half. All right. So getting things going. Annette's going to come off the bench. She's going to hand off to White Lucas. Good run. White, you had an 80-yarder called back early in the game. I was breaking down the film. I didn't really see a, a, a holding call. Oh, i got to switch one thing. See him likes to send me the end zone shots. Okay. We'll watch it one more time. White Lucas is going to take it up the middle. Nice cut to the outside. Generating a little spark for the offense. And then from there. James Garrett, the receiver, fourth and 15. This is a big down. He's just going to run a go route. Isn't it Garrett it right James, not James Garrett? Yeah, That's, James. Is it? That way, okay, Max Preps, I'm going to sue them because I thought the same thing. Thank I you said for Garrett cur- James a couple weeks ago, but yeah. No, I do remember you saying that, Terry, and I saw that, and I'm like, well, Remember last it? year? I did that with you, Wyatt. Last I called Lucas Wyatt. Wyatt. <laughs> Hedick had to call me and say, dude, you know his real name. Yeah. Remember that? Come on, Mo. <laughs> okay, everybody go to... Max preps right now. I promise I'm you on that's it. what it says. All right. Thank you. Okay. So they won't score on that play, but Brady and Nett is going to pull it, gets outside, and just uses the speed to get in the end zone. So a game that was starting to get away, it's now 17-7. You guys are coming back wide, yeah. looking good. I can confirm that it says James Garrett on Max preps. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> uh, so San Juan Hills wouldn't go away. They, they can sense the comeback. So that was a big uh, response yeah. by them. They get back in the end zone. It's 24-7. I mean, at this point, did you think we've got this? Or it's I mean, I knew we were rolling on offense, so I thought we had a chance. Okay, so you still down 17, but you're right. The offense kind of woke up in the second half. Garrett James. Good to have him back. Yeah, off the bootleg. <laughs> sets up. And that, down the, I mean, that's a tough one to defend when the ball's up like that. But anyway, sees the ball in the air, gets the separation, so he's going to set his team up on the right side of the field. And then from there, Garrett James, again, off play action. Annette being patient, hits him in the quarter of the end zone. So now, when it looks like San Juan Hill's going to pull away, we got a 14-point ball game, excuse me, a 10-point ball game, 24-14. Yeah. Now, here's probably one of the plays of the game. Watch Brett Klimmer come off the edge, and then Damian Zeno Herrera is going to scoop and score. Boom! Just attaches that quarterback from the ball. Touchdown CDM. Now, I want to show you this from the end zoning because it gives a little bit more justice. Let's do this. Bear with me here. Okay. Brett Klimmer is going to come up the gut. I don't care how tough a quarterback you are. That hurts. Brett's such a good player. <laughs> he was literally yeah. uncovered. I probably could have yeah. made that play. Yeah. Uh, that's asking a lot, Taryn. <laughs> I want to see that, Taryn. <laughs> okay. right. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Enough of Brett. We're moving on. Okay, so now they've got the ball. They're only down three. This is an opportunity to take the lead. Bradenet's going to drop back. He's got some good pocket presence. Awareness is going to get outside of the pocket, pick up some yards. And this is probably the next play that really hurts CDM. Yeah. Annette's going to hit his tight end. And I'm telling you, when they put that helmet on the ball. I, it, I still don't think it was a fumble. I was right there. So, yeah, I, that was yeah. the thing. It's hard it, to see. It could from, go 50-50, honestly. Because Breck was lobbying that he was down. Yeah. And that was a tough break. Between the holding call that brought back your yeah. ER touchdown and that. Because now they're set up on their side of the field. Yeah. So San Juan Hills takes advantage. And so, you know, instead of CDM possibly taking the lead, now they're down 10 again. Yeah. That, that's tough. But to your guys' credit, you didn't give up. You kept battling. And that's going to continue to drive his team late. Emory Davis on the far sidelines. Going to run that go route, falls down, catches it, so keeps the CDM drive, drive alive. And then from there, Annette's going to hit Emory again. 
The only problem at this point, there's about 50 seconds left. CDM's gonna have to onside, they don't recover, and at that point, San Juan Hills just has to take a knee. So 31-28 was the final. Yeah. Cole, go ahead and close that out, please. So, common theme with the Newport Beach schools this week, they both battled back from 17-point deficits yeah. on a fight, and which is appropriate, because yeah. what happens on Thursday? <laughs> the Battle of the Bay, we'll talk about that more, but. Well, no, let's talk about yeah, that I now, mean, uh, uh, since we got White here. White, yeah. I know that's a tough loss. And yeah. in football, you're not going to win every game. Sometimes you lose. Yeah. But how long did it take you to get over that before you started thinking about Harbor? Because well, this I'll, is Battle of the Bay week. I was instantly moved on. I'm, I'm ready for Harbor. What's school going to be like this week? Oh, it's, gonna, it's so fun. <laughs> the atmosphere is just crazy. Yeah. Well, it's a Thursday game. What are your thoughts on that? I know it's a holiday. and I mean. Do you think it'll matter or is it going to be packed? It's still going to be packed. So if you've never been to the Battle of the Bay, oh, I can't the encourage best. you enough. It is an experience. I mean, I... Yeah. I've been thinking about it all week. I'm so yeah. excited to yeah. go there. Right? I've been thinking all year. Yeah. Well, Since you had a year to think about it because you had a one point loss last year that was. Yeah. I mean, did those guys remind you about that or? Uh, no, we kind of tried to move on from it. So does but. it look different at CDM without that uh, trophy there this year? Yeah, we'll get it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to be a good matchup. Um, yeah. You know, and it, it is a short week. Did you guys do anything on, on Saturday as a team that you usually wouldn't do because you have such a short week? No, I think we, we really need to learn from our San Juan film and recover mainly. So we just did our recovery lifts and stuff and learn from the film. I think straight on Monday we're getting into it. Well, listen, White, we appreciate you coming in. Like I said, we've got you in for the fan zone. So we're yep. going to take like a five-minute break. The fan zone airs on Monday right after this yep. show. We're going to have a lot of back and forth, and we're looking forward to it. So mm -hmm. thank you for coming in. Yep. I knew you had a tough loss, but let me tell you something. Winning cures all yeah, misery. And if it's the Battle of the Bay game, yeah. San Juan Hills will feel like years ago. Yeah. So, all right. So, week six in the books. Um, Where's Los Another Al? great week of football. Oh, thank you, Taryn. Yeah. I, so, Los Al was on the road at Helix yesterday. Uh, excuse me, Lincoln. Lincoln. Lincoln, yeah. Uh, it was a one o'clock game, and they've got a bye week. So, basically, I break these down from the film I get from the coaches on Huddle. Los Usually Al's going Saturday into a night. bye. So, I don't think they're going to go back to the office Saturday right. night, upload Huddle, ODK. Right. And send, I just, I'm not on their radar as far as. They had a tough one. They lost 24 to 14. So. They had a 7 6 lead at halftime, yeah. uh, but fell short. So I didn't get the film, so I can't break it down. But again, they're off this week. I don't expect them to send me film on a Saturday night right. after a loss going into a bye. But they, so. uh, they've got the bye week and they got that collision course with Edison in a couple weeks. So. <sighs> That's another great game I'm looking forward to. Yeah, right? one, one big game at a time. Let's uh, Newport Harbor CDM this week. And then, boy, another great week of Sunset League football in the books. Great job breaking down the film coach. Thank you for the stats. Yeah, you're welcome. Anytime. Thank, Thank you, Taryn. You Do you usually wake up this early on a, on a Sunday? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this wasn't a problem. Okay. So we'll, let's uh, close out. We'll check in with Wyatt and the fan zone. Thank you for tuning in again. See you next week. Take care and God bless.